I think Chopin's music speaks to eternal values in human nature. Um, there's a very deep soul in his writing, as with most great music, but uh, Chopin has a very particular way of expressing it, um, which is difficult to put into words, uh, but it's to do with this very lyrical right-hand type of writing. And the, the, the beauty of the accompaniments, the subtlety of the moving accompaniments but in, the, in the left hand. Um, and there are always very special intimate moments in Chopin's music. It draws you in all the time. It, it doesn't shout at you, if you like. There are dramatic, of course there is dramatic writing there. But it is the intimacy of Chopin's music that makes it very special. He also uses the piano in a very unique way. He, he certainly makes good use of the piano, but it never, it's never music that's straining to be outside what the instrument can happily provide. The piano seems to love Chopin in the same way that those who listen to him love him. I think it's interesting to have both. I think that's what I like about coming to this festival and, and working for the Chopin Institute, that um, they are keen to hear the music both on original instruments and on modern instruments. If you're asking what my personal preference is, it would be for the modern instrument. It's the, there is a, no comparison, really, uh, over to do with the control one has on a modern instrument and the, the beautiful singing quality. Because ever since uh, Mozart's father wrote a book on uh, how to produce good tone on the violin and how to play the violin well, his, his basic precept was that we should, we should aim to sound like the human voice always. And a modern piano, you can almost do that. You, you obviously can't actually do that, but um, the, the singing tone, the tone that carries and doesn't die for a long time. This is the problem with pianos, because they're, it's a question of a, a hammer action rather than a bow where you can make the note grow louder or softer as you pull the bow. Uh, you have one split second, nanosecond, to achieve everything you want with the, uh, the note on the piano. It's over. Once the hammers hit the string, you have no opportunity to do anything about it. If, if, you, got that abs if you got that wrong, uh, the tone breaks the line, or it's not loud enough, it's not soft enough, it doesn't fit. Um, but on a modern piano, you can play it in such a way that the sound will hang as long as possible, whereas in, on the original instrument, the sound tends to drop off rather quickly. I think that Chopin was not just unhappy in London, he was unhappy for much of his life. I mean, I think he was a fairly sorrowful character. His life took many strange uh, bends, and uh, there were people in his life who were both probably strong for him and important to him, but also must have created stress for him as well. Um, we know he was ill when he was in Mallorca at the... Uh, the um, monastery and things like that. He was never a strong man, and I'm sure uh, London, I, I know in those days um, Haydn used to complain about London. It was a very busy, noisy city for the time. There were people crying out in the streets, selling, selling uh, their wares. Haydn said he could never get a moment's peace, and he lived there a few years when he was writing the London symphonies. He found it difficult, and of course it 
it smelled. It was too many people without proper drainage and things like that. Um, but I don't know whether he was specifically more unhappy in London than he was elsewhere. But I can't imagine, you know, I think back to Mozart even, who traveled so much uh, around Europe. I can't imagine what it was like in those days. You know, we, now we step on a plane and we complain if we have to wait an extra half an hour at the airport, you know, and if we have to go through security and things. In those days, they were going around by stagecoach and trying to find somewhere to stop as the wheels on the stagecoach could um, break in the middle of the night. They'd be stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere. They could be cold when they were traveling. It must have been absolutely dismal. And boats, of course, crossing the channel if there was a bad crossing. Uh, they had nothing to compare it to, but when you compare it to our modern lives, it's, it seems so horrifying what they had to put up with it. I'm surprised they traveled so much. Mendelssohn came to England, I think, ten times. He loved it. Um, in his short life, he, he was there at least ten times, and he went up to Scotland, of course, uh, as well. And it was a very um, exciting place musically, England, actually, during those, those years with the Hanoverian kings that had come over. They, they brought a lot of music, uh, Handel, Haydn, uh, to London, and um, it, it was a very exciting place.